Hello there. Today I'm excited to be trying a white wine from Argentina, specifically as Elisa Semion 2018 from Bodegas Noimia. And we're, we're here, we're in Patagonia, so Argentina's most southerly wine producing region. And the project here started in 2001 when uh, two people, somebody called Hans Vinding Dyers, a South African born Danish winemaker teamed up with, with Comtesse Amir Maroni Cinzano to try and revitalize some um, vineyards originally planted here in 1932. These were Malbec vineyards. Now, Hans Vinding Dyers is the son of Peter Vinding Dyers, who has a huge reputation as a winemaker. First of all, as manager of Chateau Rahul in, in Bordeaux, uh, subsequently for winemaking in Stellenbosch. He was a partner in the rejuvenation of the Royal Tokai Wine Company and, and has now in retirement, as it were, moved down to Sicily and is revitalising a, a wine estate there. So Hans Vinting Dears is, is now in total control of, of this estate. Now the conditions in pa Patagonia, you have vineyards with alluvial soils. They're around the Rio Negro River, which provides irrigation, which prevents this area becoming desert, because this is a cool, dry area with constant strong winds which can make it challenging to grow grapes, but does mean that there's very little disease risk from fungal diseases, because there's very little humidity. And they have a, a, a system of canals here, about a century old or, or slightly more, whereby the, the vineyards can be flooded up to four times a year using these, these channels, drawing water from the Rio Negro River. This particular wine, Alisa, and there's a red version as well, is made from fruit that's bought from growers in the area. Evidently, the Semillon that goes into this is from vines that are about 40 years old. So there's a wonderful concentration. And you get naturally quite low yields from these sort of alluvial free draining soils and the old vines and the naturally sort of cool, dry conditions. And this comes from, I believe I'm correct, correct and I said the main quit area. And actually the bodega has a, an agricultural team that will go out and will work with the growers to make sure the fruit reaches the quality and the style of which they're looking for. I know nothing about the winemaking in this particular wine. And I have to say, at 2018, I'm slightly dubious as to what sort of condition this is going to be in, but we'll, we'll see. The first thing to say is there's a real depth of colour. I mean, you can see it through the, the clear bottle here. Um, you know, that's a fairly deep, but yet quite bright and vibrant yellow colour there. The wine has 13% alcohol. It's not particularly forming tears on the side of the glass there. No, it's, it's not. It's not particularly viscous, in other words. So let's see what make of the aromas, shall we? The aromas have a, a sort of a rich stone fruit note, and, and there seems to be the first hint of sort of creaminess, but at the same time that's all overlaid by a sort of a note of gunpowder, of dry powdery stone, so almost sort of uh, like, like sort of firework residue or a hot dry granite or something like that, very sort of dusty dry rock sort of notes over the top of this sort of riper fruit. So anyway, let's taste and see what we make of it. The wine's dry, it's of mid-weight. There's a nice balanced freshness. There's a sort of a lemony crispness on the front palate. There is that sort of early ripeness sort of peach sort of note, maybe some hints of melon. There's a roundedness that may be contributed to by the alcohol at 13%, but there's a ripeness and a roundness, but it's all quite subdued. I was uh, worried about whether the wine would have aged at all. It seems to be aging very nicely. There's a freshness. There's not quite the sort of freshness you might get with a Hunter River semi or something like that. And they're often picked with slightly lower alcohols than this. To, to retain that freshness. However, this does seem to be a wine that has managed to age fairly well so far. In fact, hasn't developed enormously. I, I wonder whether it's going to, but I, I should imagine you could keep this wine for three or four years very happily. It's not a sort of a wine that 
particularly excites me in terms of its style. However, it's well made. The flavors are lasting well. There's a balance, the alcohol's in balance, the acidity is sufficient to lift the fruit. There's a, a, a slight lemony touch and there's certainly plenty of minerality to the finish. I'm wondering whether there's a slight saline touch, maybe, but only very slightly. There isn't particularly a sort of a creamy, lazy note. There aren't notes of oak, so I'm assuming that this is a wine that's either aged in concrete eggs or stainless steel and hasn't particularly aged with its lees either. So it's an interesting wine, but, but not one that I, I think I've completely got my head around there. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you found the, the video of interest. If, if you do, uh, please do like, do share, do feel free to join up and follow us on, on YouTube. That would be fantastic to do. If you have any comments, do please leave them in the box below. We'd love to hear what you think about either the wines, the tastings we're doing, or anything else related to that. Most importantly, though, do please come and join us for another tasting in the very near future, won't you? Thanks again. Bye for now.